Our speaker is Chanel Aramili. She is a transformational leader and manifestation mentor, an international award-winning speaker and author, a workshop facilitator and trainer. So I'm glad that she doesn't have to fit all of that on a business card because nobody's passing those things out right now anyway. <laughs> he graduated from the University of California at Berkeley with a bachelor's degree in physiology, received her master's degree in physical therapy. After years of clinical practice, she climbed the corporate ladder in hospital management and administration as director of clinical services before beginning her entrepreneurial journey. She powerfully converges the science of physiology, neuroscience, psychology, and quantum physics with the age-old wisdom of consciousness to create quantum leaps in transforming lives. Uh, featured on numerous radio shows, international podcasts, and as a guest columnist for uh, BW Business World Magazine. Uh, she was awarded Exceptional Woman of Excellence at the 2018 International Women's Economic Forum. She continues to remain utterly grateful for her amazing husband of 27 years. It's nice to, to see someone who's still in love after all of that time. Uh, her two beautiful young adult children, her clients who inspire her, and the gift of life itself. Let's give a nice launch pad welcome to Chanel Aramili. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Shannon, for inviting me. Um, there could not be a better moment in time right now for me to feel that I could share a little glimpse of hope, a little bit of inspiration, um, a little bit of uh, wisdom and insight, perhaps, on helping an incredible population of people that are here today that have given their time. So thank you all for being here because we know that our greatest commodity is precious, um, which is our time. So thank you for your time. I hope that during the hour that we have together uh, that I will be able to inspire. I will be able to create that sense of motivation and a sense of feeling empowered because in times like this, I mean, being between jobs or looking for a new career path or even starting to investigate in your life if there's a business that you want to begin to grow um, or start a dream that you want to fulfill, you know, all of that is already a handful. Now you compile that on with what's happening worldwide and it probably for many, many people can feel incredibly overwhelming. So I really want to help us today together as a group to create a space where something can spark within each of us. Some glimmer of shift, hope, something different that will help take each of you in your own unique and special ways from where you are to where you want to go and perhaps even beyond that. So thank you again for having me and thank you all for being here. Just a little bit, um, I love to talk. I'm gonna do my best, so Kathy and Shannon keep me on task here with time. I wanna honor everybody's time the best I can so I will try to stay on task. And because of that, I want to just ask that you have questions that you hold if possible, unless they're so urgent, then you let Kathy know. Um, but otherwise, I will entertain questions, and I'm happy to stay afterwards, um, but happy to entertain questions in any capacity that I can. So let me start with a couple questions, because my understanding um, about Launchpad and its amazing mission, which I absolutely love and I feel is, again, more important now than ever before, is to support people who again, have either lost a job or perhaps are looking to transition into a new job or actually looking for a new career path. And again, maybe even to start their own business. But whatever that support is to help people to get back, not just on their feet, to be thriving again so that they can live this life so fully. I mean, that mission is amazing. And so I commend you, Kathy and Shannon, for all the work you do and everybody else behind the scenes that volunteers is amazing. So I'm going to ask two questions. And the first question, um, both questions, I really want each of you, no matter how much we're in our head about 
the getting the job or finding a new job or whatever that might be, just step out of your head for a moment and really go into your heart. And in your heart, ask yourself, do I have a dream that is still unfulfilled? What is that career dream? What is that dream of abundance? What is that that I may um, want yet don't really have yet? And just feel into that because sometimes being in the middle of a job transition is actually a great opportunity for us to pay attention to something within us that has had that dream something within us that has wanted to do something different. Let's take these opportunities of transition to become perhaps one of your greatest gifts ever. Rather than seeing it as one of the most difficult times, maybe we can begin to embrace it as one of the most opportune times. So I said I'd ask two questions. I have yet another question. How many of you have actually felt deep within your heart that you want to land that job or have that career or start that business. And no matter how hard you've tried, you continue to feel the struggle, the efforting, the roadblocks, if you will, because if that's what you're feeling, then there's something inside of you beckoning to be heard and really yearning to be shifted because it doesn't have to be as hard. I'm gonna share a little bit about my personal story later, um, but I do want to say something about that. I could have been a statistic, a not very pleasant statistic. I chose to find, dig deep and get that courage so that I wouldn't be the statistic. I know there's a lot of very grim statistics around um, unemployment and whatnot that's happening globally. But I'm going to ask each of you to just step into that power that you have to choose to not fall into that statistic, to rise above that and to not be a part of it. And I'll share a little bit about what that means for me later. But um, without further ado, let me see if I can pull up a presentation. But I'll come in and out of that presentation. So if I can get a thumbs up from the people I can see, can we see that good? Are we all on? Okay. So let's see what this is about. Um, I want to offer something or some things that are going to help each and every one of you. And maybe each of you will find something different, a different nugget, a different piece. But essentially, I want to address something that I've spent about a decade coming up with that has worked now for countless people. And it's three steps to creating an abundant life. And when I say abundant, I'm definitely speaking about finances, which will speak to all of you. But I also mean abundant because there's an abundance of health, there's abundance of love, there's abundance of peace, and there's an abundance of joy. And all of these things we're capable of enjoying. Um, and I wanna see if I can really help awaken you in the process of making what we seemingly feel is impossible, actually possible. I'm going to show you things. And of course, in my one hour, I'm going to do my very best to give you as much as I can, but it isn't everything. Um, but I think it will be powerful. And this is for people who are really seeking. I mean, there's, you're seeking personal development because what I have found countless times, what I've spoken about even internationally, is that professional excellence, professional success actually can accelerate when we have personal excellence, personal success, it's an inside out job. And sometimes we can feel like we're pushing against ah oh, these like job interviews and how many resumes I have to send out and how many no's do I get? And we're always looking at everything outside and we run up against the challenges often. I see so many people who have this but what happens when we change certain things within ourselves at deeper levels? All of a sudden, the effort begins to feel like more effortless. And we begin to flow. 
And so I want to be able to shine light on that possibility and, and give you a little bit of a roadmap on how that can be possible. I hope it's okay that I help each of you to kind of step back into a power that maybe you may have that stepped out of. Okay. So some key takeaways. Um, we're going to touch on two key aspects that will better align you with success. And for some people, success is going to be landing a job. For some people, success is going to be landing into a new job, a new career path. For some people, success is going to be making twice as much as they were making. For some people, success is going to have the, be the courage to, to start their own gig, their own business. But two pieces, two, and there's only two because I have limited time, but two very important pieces, and we're gonna to get to those. Um, another key takeaway is changing your current situation from what feels seemingly impossible to possible. Because I really want each of you to take away that. I'm not saying that it's not difficult out there, but I'm saying that it doesn't have to be so difficult for you. Uh, we're gonna step into the power of what it is to come out of survival mode so that we can actually step into creating. I want to um, help you to see a very out of the box formula for success. It is not your standard formula, you know, so wake up early, write goals, you know, take these actions and you become successful. This is absolutely not that formula. It's really, it's very different. Um, we're going to get to it. And I've seen it work miracles, no joke. Um, then we're going to understand a three-step process that makes it more possible for us to actually live this abundant life. And we're going to do an actual roll up our sleeves and something that will hopefully create, and I believe, yes, it will, a shift within each of you. And again, it may be different for each of you, but an exercise at the very end that will help create a shift. So that's a little bit about what we will be covering today. And we're gonna start with a little bit of inspiration. What feels impossible becomes possible for those who have the courage to believe. I'm gonna read that again. So for those of you who may feel right, this is such a difficult time and I'm really struggling to land that job or to shift my career and, finances seem really difficult, I feel overwhelmed, I feel scared. We have to start somewhere. And I mentioned that there's gonna be two key takeaways to help you begin aligning with greater success. And the first takeaway is in here. And it's the word believe. It's easy to believe things once they've happened, but you see what happens when we turn it around and we begin to believe it before it happens then it actually begins to become real for us. It shifts something within us that actually gives us more opportunities. So that quote, what feels impossible becomes possible when we have the courage to believe. So just take a moment and think about all the things that you have been stressed about around your career. And just take a deep breath and say, you know what? I may not know exactly how it's gonna unfold. I may not know when exactly it's gonna unfold because there's a lot of uncertainty, sure. And I respect that and I understand that. And I've been through that. But let's believe that it's possible. Just, and you don't even have to say, yes, I believe it, but let's just say, you know, I'm open to the possibility that if I believe in my success and I believe it's possible, then maybe it will make it easier for me to make this happen. So I don't want to spend a lot of time in explaining the science behind change and the science behind success, but I want you to know that it's real because everything that I do is founded in not just the very big concept of quantum physics, but it's also very deeply uh, supported by neuroscience. Um, and there's the power of the mind in our ability to create what we want. 
So why is success really possible in a very small nutshell? I'm going to give you a very abbreviated um, piece of information here that what I hope you gain from this, which I know many people do gain from this, is that you begin to see, oh, maybe it is possible for me to change my life. Maybe it is possible for me to have more money in my bank account. Maybe it is possible for me to actually land a job where I can make more money than I was even during this COVID crisis. Maybe that's possible. What's my part in it? But first, why is it possible? Because you see everything in the universe is energy. Everything. Your body. If everything is energy, that means your body is energy. If everything is energy, that also means the sound waves traveling between you and me so that we can hear is energy. Well, sound waves we can't see, but they're still energy. And we, they're real, we hear. So are our thoughts and our emotions energy. So are our past memories and traumas and beliefs energy. So if everything we see and everything we don't see, including our thoughts and emotions and our past, if all that's energy, let's move to the next piece. All energy has a vibration. So again, we're keeping this very cursory. A cold, dense, hard ice cube has a vibration. The water that it turns into when it melts also has a vibration, but it's different. Okay, why is this important? Chanel, why are you giving me a science lecture? I just want to get a job. Okay, bear with me. Here's the, the key, the most important piece, and it's an Albert Einstein quote. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but here's the good news. It can be changed from one state to another. If an ice cube, which is cold, dense, and hard, can change to liquid, in moments, so can thoughts that have held us back. So can emotions that we have buried within us. The fear of not having a job, the fear of the bank account, how am I going to support my family? The fear of not being happy, like, oh my God, what if I land a job that I don't want? What if I hate what I want? These are thoughts. They carry a vibration. They carry an energy, just like a cold, dark, cold, dense um, ice cube. But when that ice cube dissolves in the, just instantaneously in the warmth of our hands, it's a process of transmutation. If everything is energy, folks, that includes your past, your memories, your past associations with past jobs, with past failures, all of that's energy. And energy can be changed. Bank accounts, it's an energy. Our relationship to money, it's energy. And that too can change. So whether you understand all of the principles behind it or not doesn't matter. What's important is just that nugget that, oh, maybe there is a science behind the power for me to change my life, for the power for me to have a job, a life, a career, and a bank account, peace of mind. Maybe actually I can change this. This is just to help empower you with a bit of foundation that this is rooted in science. And of course, we can ask, you can ask questions at the end. Um, so we wanna talk a little bit about, and I hope you guys can see that slide completely. Okay, about survival. I just want you to take a moment. Let's digest what's on this slide for a moment and then we'll bring it to life for each of you, hopefully. Survival is a state of existence. Is it the best state of existence? I question that. Survival, when we think about surviving, what we're really doing is thinking about living under threat and trying to get by. Survival is about chaos. When there's chaos in our life, we're actually in a survival mode. And I'll explain why this is so critical in helping you to better align with a job, a better align with starting a new career, better align with having the courage to start a business. I'm going to get to that. And I hope this makes sense because it's really powerful. The world is in a state of survival, but you don't have to be. The world is in a state of survival, but you don't have to be. Chaos our internal chaos, what do I do? How am I gonna get there? It's chaos. That chaos is a state of survival. Conflict, do I really want that job between my head and my heart? There's a conflict. 
do I want to take a job with lower pay right now? Do I not? What should I do? Am I going to get the job? These are conflicts within ourselves. Well, our inner conflicts often, most of you will probably relate, when we're conflicted within ourselves, it's often likely that we end up having conflicts with people around us. We can just say, oh my God, I'm so stressed, sorry, I snap. But that conflict energy begins to permeate all around us. We're conflicted with you know, the job opportunities. Which one, do I, which one do I sign up for? Which one do I not? This chaos and this conflict keep us in survival. Struggle is survival. Stress is survival. So let me paint a picture for you. If every one of you could just close your eyes for a moment and imagine that you're sitting in a room with a tiger. Just imagine that for a moment. There's a tiger in the room. Tell me if there's a tiger in the room, if you have the creative power to align with that best job, to double your income. Do you have that? Or are you interested in the three primary things that happen when there's a tiger in the room? The only three things that our neurochemistry our biology, our primitive brain can perceive under threat is to run, to fight, or to hide. So often we're running away from the very opportunities that sit in front of us because we're scared deep inside. Or we're hiding from those opportunities by not putting ourselves out there, by not asking for more money, by not applying for that job because, heck, that's not something I would probably qualify for. Who says? But you see, under survival, the only things we do is fight, run, or hide. No, there is not a real tiger in the room, but our brain and our body and our life and the energy around us when we're in states of survival, when we're conflicted, when we're struggling, when we're in chaos, when we're under stress, we are truly experiencing a state of survival which doesn't give us the energy, the power to create. Tell me, if there's a tiger in the room, are any of you actually going to be interested in creating the best resume? No. Or having the most beautiful, powerful interview? No. It's just scientifically, chemically, not serving us best. Yeah, it's great to survive. But folks, there's a whole lot more to life than surviving. And what I want you to hear is that you truly can change your life from a state of survival into a state of creating abundance. But the two of them are kind of diametrically opposed. Now, again, I will entertain questions. I just want you to take a deep breath and realize that there is hope because there are ways to come out of survival. Okay, so here we go. So this out of the box formula, I'm gonna let you just read it for a moment and then I'm gonna share. Who would ever think that someone would be coaching people on business ideas, abundance issues, when they're talking about peace? <clears throat> well, that doesn't sound like a business concept. Oh, let me tell you, it is. Because when we're in survival, remember, we can't create that amazing business as well as we could when we're out of survival. When we've healed those parts of us that live in chaos, when we heal those parts of us that are living in internal conflict, when we heal those parts of us. So peace is a state of inner being. Why is that important? Because when we're in inner peace and there are no tigers in the room, I am actually going to be in my greatest flow of creative power. I'm actually going to be able to be a full expression of myself. I am going to be able to sit in front of someone in an interview and shine. Why? Because I'm in a state of peace. We'll talk about what peace concepts are, so that's coming. What's power? Why is this a part of this equation? Because let me tell you, it's taken me a decade to come up with it, but it has life, it's life-changing. Peace plus power equals prosperity. Peace plus power equals prosperity. Our inner peace 
and our inner power, when they are combined, folks, what we equate on the other side is absolutely magical. So let's talk a little bit about each of these three components, and we're going to start backwards. What is prosperity? Similar to abundance and similar to success, prosperity is having a lot of something. Prosperity of wealth. Of course I want to see all of you step into that energy. The universe is actually far more abundant than we believe, but remember that first key that we take away for success is a belief. Let's begin to believe that wealth is actually available to you. You may not know how to get there yet, don't worry. But you have to begin believing it's possible. So did the Wright brothers. They believed that it was possible for some big clunkety thing to fly in the air before it ever happened. We got to start with believing it first. Now, prosperity, yes, wealth, that's obvious, but there's also a prosperity of, a, of health. There's a prosperity of joy. There's a prosperity of love, a loving your job, being joyful in your job, feeling vibrant in your job, and yeah, making lots of money in your job. But it all begins at the very bottom, which is a state of inner peace. Okay, so if you look at this, I put wealth at the top, because I know that's real important to every one of you, to even me, heck, the more money I have, the more ability I have to do things like this, where I can offer free services, where I can help people, where I can uh, volunteer more, where I can have more time to travel and be with my family. Wealth is, gives us freedom. So yeah, it's at the top, but that's not where we begin. We actually begin at the bottom, beginning to find states of inner peace, begin to end, beginning to end the conflicts, and we'll talk about that more. So that's the bit about prosperity. So I'm assuming each of you would love to have a lot of that, all of that, yeah, if you could. So what is inner peace? <clears throat> Don't read ahead if you can, just stay with me. <clears throat> We're talking about how to shift out of survival and into inner peace. And here are some pieces that will help you. Inner peace is about finding peace between our head and our heart, where our heart says, you know what, you really do deserve to have a better home and a better life. And the head is like, are you kidding? You, you can't, you can't accomplish that. That's not that you don't, you're not educated enough. You're not smart enough. You're not whatever enough. That's the head. But when we end the conflict between the head and the heart, we begin to have more peace. When we begin to make peace with our mistake, so let's say we've lost a job, okay. Maybe we, instead of seeing it as a mistake, we begin to see it as an opportunity for us to learn so that we don't remake that mistake. So that the next job we land may pay us more, where we may stay there longer, where we may thrive, where we may contribute. So when we talk about survival, when we haven't made peace with our mistakes, we stay in survival. Why? Because we're fighting with ourselves. And remember, fighting is survival. So making peace between our head and our heart, making peace with our mistakes, making peace with our past. And that's all it is. It's part of our past. And it doesn't have to define our future. Making peace with what is. Okay, so every one of you may be in a state where you haven't found that job yet. Yet, the operative word is yet. Y-E-T, guys. You haven't found it yet. Or you haven't landed that new career path yet. But be okay with where you're at. That's making peace. Because being in resistance, being in, is, is pushing up against stress and struggle, and that is survival again. So make peace with what is. And here's something really important, guys, for every one of you, for all of us, especially globally, there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty. But make peace with what's not known yet. Because if you can, you'll come further out of survival. And you'll say, I don't know what that job is going to look like. But you know what? I believe it's going to be amazing. I don't know how I'm going to get there. That's how we begin to make peace. Okay. So this is really cool because this is what I love so much. What power do I really have? My God, I feel so helpless. Again, don't read ahead. Stay with me. 
I feel so helpless right now. I feel powerless. The economy sucks, the blah, blah, blah. And it's everything outside of me looks miserable. Ooh, I feel powerless and helpless. No, no matter what's happening outside of us, we do have a power within us. We are very powerful. We're actually powerful beyond belief, but we've actually given it away. So what power do I have? I have the power to change. Remember, everything's energy. And remember, the cool thing about energy is that the only thing it really can do is change. I have the power to change. That's powerful. What can I change? Well, I have the power to change my thoughts. Instead of thinking about the lack, I have the, the ability to begin thinking about what's possible. Instead of thinking about not deserving, I have the power to, to shift that thought and say, you know what? If I exist here on this earth, darn it, I deserve better. I'm here and I'm going to make the best of this. But you see, we have to begin changing our thoughts. We also have the power to change our emotions. We can to live and sit in doubt or we begin to entertain possibility. I'm not saying that you have to say, okay, everything's going to be fine and not believe it. What you could say is maybe it's possible. Maybe if somebody like Chanel has done it and maybe her countless clients that have done it. And I'm going to share some stories that will blow your mind. If they can do it, if I can do it, and we're all the same, you can do it. So we have the power to change our thoughts around our career, around money. We have uh, the power to change our emotions around it. We have the power to change our actions. So we are more very powerful people. We also have the power to speak up, to share what's true in our heart. We have that power to ask for what we want, but we don't. We have the power to ask the universe. We have the power to ask ourselves. We have the have power to ask our boss, but we don't. We also have the power to choose how we want to, to show up. How do we want to accept that situation? Well, that goes into the next one. We have the power to choose and we have the power to accept. We also have this power, which I can't get into in great detail, but I just want you to know we have the power to co-create with the intelligence that's in this universe. The universe which created each of you by two little cells coming together. Yes, your parents. Yes, sometimes it kind of feels icky to think about it. Our parents made love. Two little cells came together, and nine short months later, a baby was born. Okay, there's an intelligence in this universe. Well, you know what? That intelligence lives within us. It is not just outside of us. It's in us. When we learn how to co-create with this intelligence, my God, that's what we talk about when miracles happen. Miracles don't just fall in your lap. So I don't want you to think that, oh, well, I just hope for a miracle because that feels powerless. What if I told you that you can actually co-create your miracles? Now you're in power. So peace, which we talked about, making peace with ourselves in all those different ways and stepping into all the power that we do have helps us to come to prosperity, which we talked about. So this is now coming to a three-step process. So I talked about a formula for success. That's just a formula. Peace, our inner peace and our inner power is what helps us to create our prosperity. That's the formula. But then there's a how to get there. That's this. This too, literally, let's just take a moment to appreciate um, the three-step ATM process on how to create an abundant life. No pun intended. ATM process to creating an abundant life. It's about awakening. It's about transforming and then manifesting. But here's the problem. I know that there are many people, and I'm not saying you're one of them, but I know many people who have thrown their hands up. Well, I tried all that power, power of positive thinking stuff and it has it landed me look the loss of my job it didn't work and then they give up because you see what people want to get to is the m first they want to go straight to manifesting and then they throw their hands up because it didn't want won't work well manifesting is like really creating that beautiful garden of flowers and everybody wants that i do I'm sure you do, but what if in your garden of life, we're gonna use this metaphor, you want to have tremendous beautiful flowers. One flower is this brand new job that's amazing. The other flower is 
um, double the income that you made. Another flower is that you're in love with life. And another flower is that you're healthy and vibrant and you wake up every day feeling great, wanting to go to work, wanting to make lots of money, wanting to travel, wanting to do all these things. Those are like planting seeds of flowers but who in their right mind would plant seeds of flowers in a bed of weeds? So we're going to kind of come back now because we're going to look backwards at this transformational piece. This is the piece about the weeds. So we want to manifest a great job. We want to manifest more money. And we wonder why maybe it hasn't worked just yet. Many people wonder. They're like, I tried. I've been applying to so many jobs. Um, opportunities and I don't know why it hasn't happened yet and I might say to you let's take a look at that weed so the not having a job or not being happy in your current job is like a weed that you see at the surface it's growing out of the ground it's in your garden and it's so unruly that you can barely see the flowers that do exist in your life because right now you do have flowers you're here you're breathing you're seeing you're hearing these are flowers. But sometimes we can't see them because there's so many weeds in our garden. The problems, the challenges, those are the weeds. But you see, the weed isn't just the weed. Where is that weed coming from? Where is the loss of that job coming from? Underneath the ground is the root of that weed. Deep within the ground is where that weed is rooted. There's a shaft and then there's a tip of the root and there's some little offshoots. The weed has a root. The loss of a job is not the problem. What's underneath, what's within us that created that weed is what we have to heal. That's what we have to transform. Because tell me, would you want to just whack a weed off? Yeah, I know some of us do in the garden. are just like, just let me just cut it off. But you know that two days later it rains and there's that stupid weed again. Whacking it at the surface trying to just brute force our way through finding that next job and being unhappy again and landing in the same pattern. Is that really worth it? Or do we want to go down and pull that weed up from its root so that it no longer exists? That repeating pattern doesn't exist of challenges with not being happy with work or maybe not making enough money with, at work or whatever that is. For everyone, it will be unique. Transformation is about going deep within ourselves and, feel, and clearing it. And we're going to do an exercise. So I'm going to help you with something today. Um, and then there's an awakening. So really there's a process that goes from right to left. And you don't have to, it's an awakening, and we're going to talk about this. So um, what is awakening? Let's go there first. What are we awakening to? In that ATM process, before we begin manifesting and before we begin even transforming, we want to first awaken. So the first step is awakening. What are we awakening? It sounds like such a lofty word. But let's break it down to something simple. We're awakening to possibilities. The ice cube that transforms to water. Remember, I know this sounds crazy, 70% of us is water people. We're not much different. If an ice cube can transform, so can our thoughts. Man, those are already free-flowing. We can transform thoughts. It's a possibility. We begin to open to possibility. And when we open to possibility, we begin, to feel it. we begin feeling hope. When we have possibility, then what happens is we begin to ignite passion. We're like, oh, man, if it's possible to change my life, to change my job trajectory, to change my bank account, if that's really possible and there's science that proves it, oh, now I'm going to start getting passionate. And when I'm passionate, then what happens is my true purpose begins to awaken. Because when I have no passion for life or for whatever, what I'm really here to do is dampened. And when we are awakening to possibilities and we awaken to passion and we begin to find that purpose, like what do I really want to do? What do I want that job to really look and feel like? Well, now we begin to feel powerful. Okay? So... That first part of that three-step ATM process to actually creating the abundant life is awakening. The second piece is the transition, which we dressed a little bit. It's about going and pulling the weeds out of the garden. What are we transforming? We're transforming thoughts that are outdated. Well, you know, I've all, I just grew up with not having much money. Well, that's a thought. 
yeah, maybe that was real, but it's not a thought that needs to belong to you anymore. It carries an energy and a vibration. And we broadcast that out into the universe and we begin to bring that right back to us. So it's like a boomerang. What we put out comes back. So we can transform our thoughts and our beliefs. And so many of our thoughts and beliefs, I want you to hear this because this is the deepest part of the work, are not ours. They're our parents. They were the thoughts and beliefs and, and memories of what we saw when we grew up. And we learned them just like we learned the ABCs. And they began to become programmed into our subconscious. And I won't go into all of that now, but 10% of our day-to-day -day life is run by our conscious mind and 90% is by our unconscious world. Okay, the things that we've learned and been programmed. We don't think about the ABCs when we write a sentence. That's just naturally programmed into us. Well, so are the programs of lack. So are the programs of I don't deserve, I'm not good enough. Those are just ABCs within us that were learned. We have to now unlearn them and learn a new language. Then we begin to create a more abundant life. We also have to transform emotions. We have to move from fear and doubt and worry, which are all survival emotions, to the energies of hope, joy, possibility, all of that. And that changes the total trajectory of how we show up. And it changes what we then boomerang back to us, what comes back. We change habits and patterns that we've learned. And we begin to change our actions from distraction, because many of us take a lot of actions. But I want you all to begin paying attention. Am I taking a thousand actions each day that are actually really distractions from what I really want to do? We move from distraction to inspired action. Okay. Then the third part of that amazing process is the power of manifestation. And manifestation is planting the seeds and watching those flowers grow. And it requires belief. It requires faith and trust. It requires a co-creative process. Here's the most simple co-creative process I want you to understand. But that's no different than co-creating a big bank account. That's no different than co-creating debt-free life. That's no different than co-creating financial uh, freedom. Every you're, We're alive right now. And that was a creative power that created our existence. But every breath we take is a co-creation of that life. So when we are looking to make more money, to land a better job, to change our career path, what we're really doing is saying, I want to co-create that with the universe. Just like you co-create your life here by every breath you take. It's a process, but it works. And manifestation is around, about allowing, not forcing. It's like a baby. Once we were conceived, it would be horrible if we said, you know what, I want that baby in three months. Uh, that wouldn't be very good because there's a process that's involved where we have to allow time for that baby to be developed before it's born. So there might be a process for each of you where you can allow that space as you do your healing to allow not just a job, but that amazing job to show up. So we might want it in three months. Well, that baby would have been premature and probably not have survived. So it may have kind of, we might have seen it for a little bit, like a quick job that comes and goes. But if we really want to manifest, then we need to give space. And then that's the allowing. And expecting, yes, it's expecting that, yes, I expect my miracle to happen because I'm going to do my part and I'm going to help let the universe do its part. When we expect the miracle but do not demand of it, that's a great energy. So I want to just take a moment before we actually move into a, an exercise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can come out of this slide for just a second. I'm going to stop sharing if I can here. And then, okay. So I want each of you to just take a moment. No, I believe and I understand that each of you may be going through your own challenges right now. And I respect that. Um, looking for jobs, uh, worrying about bank accounts. 
But let's just shift the energy for a moment because the energy of gratitude and the power of our intention to create something better is real. So just take a deep breath and sit with the gratitude that, you know what, I'm here in this moment. And what if I have everything inside of me that really can help me to get where I need to be? And not only where I need to be, but where I want to be. And maybe beyond that. And if you can't find gratitude right this moment around your work, because that feels tough, take a moment and find gratitude about something because it will shift your internal energy. You'll be surprised at what's possible because when we shift to gratitude, we actually can attract more reasons to be grateful. Because what if just today, one of you actually, or many of you, that would be lovely, receive something back from a company that you had applied to. What if that's possible? And what if all you can do is be grateful that I don't know when and how, but I really am grateful that it's on its way. Okay. Just like a baby that isn't born yet, those nine months, a pregnant woman and and that husband that's waiting for that baby will say, I'm so grateful that that baby's on its way but I'm not gonna rush it because I want it to be fully developed. So just be grateful that it's on the way. Now, we're gonna come back. Okay. And we're gonna move to an exercise. So if you have a piece of paper and a pen, I want you to understand, so listen to this for a moment. We're gonna identify any fears around success because see why you might be here today is because you really deep within you without knowing it, there's a part of you that's saying, I want to be successful. I want to have a successful job. I want to have a successful life. I want to achieve financial success. But there's something here that I have to shift in order for that to happen. So we're gonna identify some fears of success in a moment. And I'm going to, the reason why most people, and I want you to hear this, the obvious is the fear of failure. So many of us actually hold ourselves back because we're afraid of failing. And the very fear of failure and the very fear of being rejected because we failed actually rejects our own success. Let me say that again. So maybe we've lost a job. Maybe somebody's lost a job. Maybe somebody's tried to find a job and they haven't yet. And they feel that energy of failure and they feel the rejection. And when we feel failure and rejection, we actually begin to play more small. We begin to hide even more. And remember what hiding is. It's one of the three things we do under survival. There is no failure and there is no mistake that can ever stop us from our success if we're willing to just see that each one of those was a stepping stone to something that I can create within myself that's better and greater. Okay. We talk about failure and we talk about rejection a lot when people talk about success, but I want you to do this differently because what I have found with countless of my clients is that there's almost a greater fear of success than there is of even failure. Isn't that interesting? So here's some examples. And try not to read ahead. We're just going to go through each one. And for each of you, something different is going to resonate. But what I want you to do right now is just set an intention in your heart that you are ready to face one, at least one of your fears of success, whatever they may be. Your head might say, yeah, I want to be successful. Yeah, I want to make more money. Yeah, I want to do this. But that, those programs, just like the ABCs that you may have learned when you were younger, the 90% of us that just spews out not having to know the ABCs, but we can write sentences, paragraphs, books, that part of us is what actually holds us back. And remember, energy can't be destroyed. So if it's something we've accumulated as we were growing up, It stays like an ice cube within us until we change it. 
okay? So here's some examples. These are just some examples. There may be something else for you, but I'm just gonna jog some of your internal. We're gonna let your unconscious world bring up to the surface whatever fears of success that have held you back, whether they're yours or your parents. How many people have felt like, you know, being really successful, like not just having a job, but being really successful would mean that I probably won't have much time with my family. We're talking now an internal conflict between our head and our heart. Remember, our conflict is survival. So what if that's not really true? What if actually, and I can speak to this, what if we're actually making more money and becoming more successful and actually having more time to take off? What if we actually have more time with our family? That doesn't mean we're not invested in our business or our career or our job. Sure, but what if it also offers us time? That's a fear of success that would actually limit us from getting that next higher paying job or higher profile position. Another fear of success is what will people think? Like, oh, look at her. She's all about the money. She must not really care about her family. You guys... That's not even true. But many of us have these thoughts that we've heard from our parents or from our society, and then they become part of our, an extension of ourselves. What will people think of, of me being successful is actually a fear of success, and it holds us back unconsciously. What about those of us who are told to be quiet? Like, shh, you, know, you need to be quiet. Shh, shh, you don't want people to see, you know, just, just be quiet. What that does is it programs us into a state of hiding and not expressing ourselves fully. And then what happens is we're afraid of success because success would mean that I will be seen and heard. Yes, success can mean that you will have to be seen and heard. So another is the people who have felt like they've always been the people pleasers, have done all the stuff, the woe is me, I have to take on all the responsibilities. Well, I can't be, I wanna be successful, but I, can't, I won't let myself be successful because then I'll have to do everything at home and everything at work. And that's just too exhausting. But what if that's not true? Because what if that success offers you the, res the financial resources to hire help? Well, maybe I won't be working harder, but it was a mindset that I had. Then there's also traumas, and I'll have three listed here that I myself have seen with clients personally, and as they've transmuted that, they have seen incredible success. An old trauma that they experienced as a child and took on, like the ABCs, they learned it and they held on to it, and then it started playing out in their life, is that when my dad got a promotion, when he became uber successful, he left us. Well, do you realize that that gentleman who was trying to become successful in his career path held himself back unconsciously because he never wanted to repeat his past? But when he realized that that was his dad's story and not his, and he began to take that ice cube out of the freezer and put it into the warmth of his heart and realize, I, don't, I can be successful and still love my family. And all of a sudden that energy shifted in him he began to align greater with success. Here's another old trauma. When my mom worked, to all the women there, or to the, to the dads who are, um, you know, also take care of their children, when my mom worked, she was never home for me. Well, do you know what energy that is? That's the energy of abandonment. Children who are two and three or four may feel have felt abandoned, but what they really didn't understand with their mind is that mom was trying to make a better life for them and that I can actually work and still make a great life for my children. So these are just old learned traumas. Um, another one, and this, this I've seen multiple times, my parents lost all their money or my dad had so much money and he lost it all. And so the unconscious program is, I don't want to create success because it's going to get lost anyway. So the fear of losing something actually prevents us from getting something. Very interesting, very, very powerful. So I want to give you each just a moment, a quiet moment, 
because I want this to not just be information that Chanel is spewing, but I want this to be a moment of transformation because that's what I believe in. Take a moment and really ask yourself, what is holding me back from success? What did I see in my past? What do I believe in my, in my being today that could be holding me back from success? Just take a moment to do that. And at the end, if anyone has questions about how to move through that, I'd be happy to entertain those questions. Know that what you're doing is you're bringing the root of a weed up out of the darkness in the soil that it was buried in. These things that were buried within you, unconsciously buried and held within you that have held you back from being joyful at work, from being um, financially successful at work. And you're here to change that. You're here to bring it into the light, just like that ice cube that came out of the freezer, you're bringing it out and changing it right now. We may not have, I'm not sure about our time because I do have some other things. I'm just gonna show this to you very briefly, but there's a link I believe that Shannon included for all of you, a document. And this is a process I use with a lot of my clients. Um, and it's called the team approach to making miracles happen. The team is you and the universe, but remember the universe is also made up of a lot of people. So the team approach to making miracle ha miracles happen means you don't do it alone. You not only conspire with the universe to make these things happen, but you also co-conspire with all of those around you. So we start this, then I, I'm gonna run through it very, very quickly and I apologize. Again, you can ask questions if we have time. The M is, is the opposite side of the equation. So when we, it's basically our thoughts plus our emotions plus, plus our aligned and inspired actions is what creates miracles. So how we actually start this worksheet is backwards. Well, we start with the M first. We say, what do I want to create? What miracle do I want to really see happen and how am I going to co-create that? Let's say here's an example of a miracle. And that miracle could be for, oh, sorry, for each of you that could be different, but that miracle could be, I really not just want to land my job, but I want to have a job or a career that I love that pays me more than I made in my last job. I want to be happy and making more money doing my next job or having my next career or starting my business, whatever that miracle is, be specific, but not so specific that you eliminate possibility, okay? Then you come over here and you start with the, the, the thoughts and the emotions and the actions. Now remember, if I have three negative thoughts, if I have one negative thought, one negative emotion, and I don't even take action, am I going to equate to a positive miracle? Mathematically not possible. What if I have 10 positive actions? I sent out 100 resumes. I called 10 different people. I reached out to my network. All of that is beautiful. Those are all positive. But what if I have five negative emotions around the possibility? What if I have fear and I have doubt and I have worry and I have um, this hopelessness and all these emotions, grief and everything that's kind of holding me back. And then I have thoughts that are also negative. No matter how many positive actions I take, my equation never seems to get positive. But as I begin, so the thoughts, what thoughts do you have around that miracle? Do you believe it? Do you believe you deserve it? And you begin to identify with yourself, I want to create this, but what are my thoughts around it? What are my emotions around it? And what actions am I taking? And you begin to actually change those then you begin to align with a miracle that gets to unfold. Remember I said it's a co-creative process. Your piece is to look at your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions. And then you allow the universe to co-create with you the miracle. Um, next. And I know we just, we, I'm going to breeze through these, but I want to inspire each of you because let me tell you, these are real people with real stories. I'm going to share you very quickly. These people are no different than any one of us. Not you, not me. Real people, real stories. These are my real clients. 
from the past or present. Uh, I had a CTO that was laid off in November of last year. <clears throat> he didn't start working with me then. Right around the holidays before the COVID stuff, was scared very deeply about how he was going to sustain the life that he was living and the, and the family and the two kids that are about to go to college. And he, then COVID hits and now his des desperation and his hopelessness just heightened beyond belief. He was so deep in anxiety that he just could not even figure out how to get there. Why? Because he was stuck in survival. So anyway, he was referred to me by another client of mine. We began working together in April. He joined a uh, four-week group journey that I was having in May, and it was, the, it was called Co-Creating Your Miracles, and or saying yes to co-creating. So he joined that as well as a three-month private program, and we had just begun the work. He did the program, and two weeks after that program, actually less than two weeks, he emailed me, and he said, Chanel, I just got an offer. And he landed a job as a CTO of, of a high-tech startup in Austin. It's got incredible potential, making good money, and he's excited about his job. This happened during a crisis. Not easy, because these positions are far and few between right now. You know, C-suite positions, far and few between. Another story, a Af young African-American um, gentleman that came to me a couple years ago, he worked in, in, on Wall Street um, in finance and in his early 20s um, laid off. Basically, he had no time to create his, um, you know, his kind of nest egg. So very soon, he was pretty much out of money. Now, he's educated, worked in finance and Wall Street, ended up pretty much having to become an Uber driver to make ends meet. Uh, within a f the first few weeks of working together, he uh, got to, to leave his Uber job because he actually got some seed funding to begin a real estate company. Wasn't making a lot of money, but enough money now that he didn't have to be an Uber driver, but he could actually put his energy towards creating his real estate company. Fast forward about a year and a half. So he took, he, we worked together for about so nine months and then he took a year off. He came back um, recently and he's in a, in a private six month program right now because he just landed um, venture capital money, lots of it, to create wellness centers around the US. So he's now living in a high rise in uh, Detroit. Um, he was earlier moving and staying from one friend's house to another. And so these are real stories. But let me tell you what he had to go through. He had the courage to work deeply. And what he had to heal were his ancestral roots of lack, but also his ancestral hate of money. He came from slavery. His roots came from slavery. Not him, but four generations back. The association was money was hatred because those who had money were abusive. Now, this wasn't his story, but he was playing it out because it's what was programmed, handed down to him generationally, as he healed this compassionately and he let go of those stories, he got to create his own. It's really fascinating and real. Um, another story, a woman who making a lot of money, she was making $250,000 a year. That's not maybe the story that we're here sharing with, with all of you, but what I want you to understand is what's possible. In less than a year and a half, and she also joined a, a private program for a year, but then she also just did a group session in, in that group program in May, that group journey. At the, um, in that, during that group journey, she signed a contract for just shy of a million dollars with a high net worth family as their CFO. She quadrupled her income, but she had to peel away the layers of waiting for the men in her life to provide for her. And she went through two, two divorces, so there was a lot of healing. When she healed those, she actually began to step into her own power. And she now makes her own salary of just shy of a million. Okay, real story in Salsalito, California. I can go on and on, but I just want you to, to hear this and read this. These are now not success stories that I'm sharing, but real testimonials, and there's more on the site. And I'm, I'm sharing this for a reason, because what happens when we hear other people's stories is we feel inspired. 
rather than hearing the rates of unemployment, I want you to hear something else, okay? I want you to hear a new story. And I want you to begin creating a new story. So this gentleman, uh, who now is, a co is an owner of, an, of a actually two companies, um, thank you again for your incredible and yes, life-changing work. I've spent hundreds and thousands of dollars and years trying to fix this issue and still fell back into the same patterns. Literally, you helped me to wipe it away. Well, I shined light and I do use a deep intuitive process, but he did the work because the power lies within you. The power lies within each of us. I'm not going to take that away from anyone. Everything we do is within us. And he had found exactly the tools he needed and you carry those forward with you forever because it's not a machine. It's all in you. I can't thank you enough for your generosity. Generosity is appreciated more than you know. You're a miracle. And I'm grateful to walk in your light. And another gentleman, much more money related, also here, just since I began my work with Chanel, I've got to raise over $500,000 in investment capital for my hospitality development business. It's real. I want to just share my own story for a moment. Um, I had a very successful career that I left to raise two children. And I will never take that back because it was the best thing I could have ever done. And my husband supported us through that. But through the process, I lost a sense of myself. I really didn't even know who I was anymore. Um, you know, a mom, a wife, a laundry person, uh, whatever, chef. But but I had lost touch with my purpose, a bigger purpose beyond raising children, beyond being a good wife, beyond being a good human being. I had a purpose. Well, I was so lost and mired that um, I did start a, a, I started a company uh, in, in the fashion industry completely unrelated to my career. And I did that for four years. I gained a ton of credibility, a lot of visibility, but no money. Like I dumped a ton of money into it. Was it a failure? You could look at it as such. But was it actually what I needed so that the next venture I started would be uber successful? Absolutely. But what happened in between both of those ventures, my first business and the one I'm in now, is that I was diagnosed with cancer and um, went through a very, very difficult journey. I didn't know if I'd be here. There were statistics. And the reason I'm sharing this story is because I know that all of you are probably, or many people right now are struggling with the statistics around unemployment. I know that, and that number looks real. But so did that number look real when I was diagnosed. And I refuse to be that statistic. I want you to refuse to be that statistic, okay? Refuse to be that statistic. Be the other statistic. Be the statistic that shines. Be that person that gonna, is then going to turn around some years later, each of you, and tell your story that I made it through not just getting a new job or a new career or a new business started, but I made it through the most difficult times that humanity has experienced. That's where we are, but it doesn't have to be your story unless you make it your story. So I then started what I'm doing now as a result of my challenge. So let your challenge today, whatever it may be, financial, um, it may be little bits of everything, relational, financial, um, career, it could be just feeling disconnected from life and from people, whatever you may be experiencing without judging it. It may not look like your gift yet, but if you're willing to unwrap a really ugly package, you're going to find that what's in this gift right now, this challenge, is possibly the greatest thing that you will ever have accomplished in your life. I'm going to leave you with this because I really, really want you to embrace this because it's happened for me and countless people. And I want you to be this statistic. Make the unbelievable believable. Then you can make the impossible possible. So you start with the belief. Then you can make the impossible possible. And when this is happening, you're actually gonna remember how powerful you truly are.